words of the ancients, one should make his decisions within the space of seven breaths. It is a matter of being determined and having the spirit to break right through to the other side. Now before we get into this video, I'd like to remind you that you can now receive a special discount on your next watch from Watchbox. Check the description below for a promo code exclusively for the good gentry. For those of you new to the channel, Watchbox are the world's leading, most trusted and respected dealers in pre-owned luxury watches. Onwards and upwards. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, we are catching up with an old friend. Yes, the Alpinist is back, uh, a favorite of the channel. Uh, it was definitely popular here with the good gentry out there. Uh, far before it caught on with the wider uh, watch-loving public, uh, undoubtedly. Um, and um, definitely before the price gouging madness of recent years, which is just ridiculous. Anyway, before I get into it, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. Yes, it's the Aquas, one of my latest acquisitions. Uh, very pleased to have this back in the collection and of course on the rubber strap. So this is one of the newest incarnations of uh, a very important series of watches. Now, why is it so important? Well, as always, a little brief history and I'll be brief because we have covered the uh, Alpinist to death on the channel. Um, so here's a little bit of history to contextualize. Seiko first introduced the Alpinist in 1961, and it has become the brand's second longest running uninterrupted line of watches. The intention was very simple, a reliable timepiece for Japanese mountain climbers and other sports enthusiasts. The production of this watch was highly important because it was the first real attempt at making a sports watch by Seiko. It was inspired by the Yama Otoko, which is Japanese for mountain men. Mountain hiking is a popular pastime for many uh, during their spare time as mountains cover much of the Japanese landscape. And you can see it featured heavily in uh, their classic art, Hiroshige and many others spring to mind. Naturally, these mountaineers and hikers required robust gear that could handle the rugged conditions that they could also depend on for accuracy. Seiko's answer was the Laurel Alpinist, the first of seven generations over the subsequent decades. It was followed by the second generation known as the Champion 850, named for its 850 movement inside. The Alpinist as we know it today looks very different from these early, more dressy minimalist ancestors. And then what followed was arguably the most influential and definitive Alpinist uh, that would commence in the mid 90s. With the introduction of the highly desired Red Alpinist, these were manufactured only for two years, but the popularity has increased and remains one of the most lusted after by collectors. They are commonly referred to as the Red Alpinist because of the red wording on the dial, but its stylistic technical changes it featured is the main reason it is regarded as important. Here we saw sapphire glass used for the first time and now the famous cathedral hands, an increased depth rating of 200 meters, two crowns rather than one, a second for the new inner rotating compass bezel for navigation and a high beat hackable automatic 4S15 movement with hand winding. Over the following years, the Alpinist would continue to evolve. A few quirky limited editions uh, surfaced, but mainly would remain on this path aesthetically, but then eventually seeing international success with the Saab line in the mid to late 2000s. Initially domestically released, these would use the 6R15 automatic movement and would remain the same until recently.
So remember when I predicted the blue Alpinist uh, many years ago, when the green Saab 017 was the only one currently available? Well, Seiko answered our prayers in 2019 to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Alpinist line uh, with that stunning blue version. And then in late 2019, we heard that even more color combinations were on the horizon and they would be shifting the Seiko to the Prospects line, which is their uh, professional series of uh, watches. And this was all part of a recent branding consolidation effort, hence why now we see the X on the dial. So then fast forward to January 2020, and we see finally the release of three variants, uh, this being the cream dial with gilt. Now there are some notable upgrades in this watch, not just the new color uh, combination. So let's get the dimensions out of the way. We have a diameter of uh, 39.5 millimeters, a height of, I would say that's just a smidgen over 13, 13.3 there. Lug to lug, we're looking at 46.5 millimeters. Thankfully, the lug width has remained the same and is a proportional 20 millimeters. The case, again, is entirely stainless steel with um, almost a completely high uh, polished finish except for the tops of the lugs uh, being the only exception. These have directional uh, brushing with a graceful wide beveling that transitions perfectly into the mirror finish of the sides you see there. Um, it is wonderfully done I have to say that. The watch now comes on this generously thick bolstered leather strap uh, and it's in a dark uh, I would say fern or pine green uh, that underlines its connection with nature. Uh, perhaps even a cheeky nod to the old green Alpi, who knows? The underside is a black calfskin and surprisingly supple, um, with a rather luxurious feel to it. Uh, it's completed with off-white stitching accents, uh, also on the tip there you see, uh, which complement the cream dial uh, very, very nicely. This is then fastened using a double push button, which is um, really easy to use. Thread it through there when it's undone, like that, into the desired slot, like so, and click, boom, and there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And I have to say it is very solidly constructed. A million miles away from the days of uh, old Saab 017 straps, that seemed always to be a, an afterthought. The glass is now a flat sapphire with anti-reflective coating on the inside. Uh, another little subtle step up from its predecessors. Most notably, you'll see the return of a uh, 90s Alpinist feature. Yep, that's right, the Cyclops uh, for the three o'clock date there. More on that later. Again, we have the inner bi-directional rotating compass bezel uh, that is uh, manipulated by the crown there at the four o'clock. Then you have your typical screw down crown at the three. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is uh, knurled again in those uh, recessed um, sections for extra ergonomics. Another change in the case is that it features a display back and the glass this time is Hardlex which is Seiko's own proprietary um, glass. Now Hardlex seems to get a bad uh, rap, I'm not quite sure why, it's uh, certainly a step up from uh, acrylic and uh, plexiglass but um, it being on the underside is no problem because it's obviously going to be uh, less exposed to the elements, so yeah, absolutely fine. But it does reveal the most significant upgrade, and that is the automatic caliber 6R35, which means it now has a whopping 70 hour power reserve. The Alpi has often been called the Japanese Explorer because of its similar backstory. Um, compared to the very first Alpinists that had a more restrained style, the Alpinist has become more complicated as it evolved, not just mechanically, but in its design. Almost as a deliberate response to the Explorer, uh, the ravishing gilt applied numerals and arrowhead markers were placed mostly in the in-between even numbers as opposed to Rolex's uh, 3, 6 and 9. 
This is a style we see more in Swiss watches of the 1930s and 40s, and strangely similar to the pre-Explorer Oyster Perpetuals. This vintage look was then further accentuated with the inclusion of cathedral and syringe style hands. Again, precursors to the very effective uh, Mercedes hands that Rolex uses. The result is a far more dressy feel than sporty, um, especially with this resplendent sunburst effect of the dial that is certainly less pronounced than the bewitching blue or the vivid green before it, but regardless, it is still there. In fact, I would call it a very light buttermilk or champagne rather than uh, cream dial. I think the cream does it a bit of a disservice. It also being less of a louder color allows the gold markers and hands to glisten nicely without being too blingy. Uh, it certainly has a, a very much a, an old world feel and charm to it. I'm really glad they kept with these semi-skeletonized hands. Undoubtedly, it's one of the most crucial elements in the distinctive and lovable design language that has helped make the Alpinist a unique piece. The crisp black printing and small pops of color, especially on the compass bezel, um, contrast nicely and effectively uh, with the dial. I also really love how the second's hand reaches uh, with great precision that uh, busy uh, seconds a minute track. The new 6R35 means that uh, if it is your daily work watch, you can take it off on a Friday night, pick it back up on a Monday morning, and it will still be going thanks to that incredibly impressive power reserve. Although the Alpi was intended to tough it out on weekend adventures too, and it still retains that highly respectable 200 meters depth rating. It does wear a lot larger than its predecessor, but reassuringly so, and weighs around 87 grams. And with the extended case back you see there, uh, it does sit quite proud on the wrist. The curvature of the lugs definitely makes it sit a bit taller too, and gives it a bit more presence. In terms of accuracy, it was stated at plus uh, 25 to minus 15 seconds per day out of the factory, but don't panic. Once settled in, it was more like a quarter of that. Um, and if you regulate it, there's no reason why you can't get it uh, performing within COSC. But one of the most revered aspects of Seiko's movements is the longevity when it comes to mechanics, as the 6R35 beats at 21,600 vibrations an hour. Again, this slower speed means less friction on the contact surfaces of the components inside. And it does have Seiko's own DearShock absorbers, making it incredibly robust as well as a decent amount of magnetic resistance. As with most uh, Seiko automatic movements, we see the highly efficient magic lever system uh, for the bi-directional winding. And if I unscrew the crown, that does thread very nicely, I might add, you get all the uh, inherent features that you might expect, like manual wind in the first position. If I pull it out to the second, you see a quick set date, and of course, if I pull it out all the way, you'll see it is indeed hackable. Now, while we're discussing performance, I should talk a little bit about the Cyclops there. Uh, while it will alienate many, I can't deny it's actually rather useful in reading the uh, diminutive date window there. Now, I'm not just a big Seiko guy, I am a Rolex guy too. So for me, it really isn't an issue. In terms of negatives, this watch does break my heart a little bit. Uh, but as always, I have to be honest and report my findings here. Uh, despite getting so many things right uh, and not doing anything too drastic to um, jeopardize its core identity and the aesthetics of the watch, uh, some old issues disappointingly persist. The misalignment of the compass <laughs> still is there. Just to show you what I mean, if I line up the north, which is in that pumpkin orange, uh, which I really do like the, that choice of color, slightly gives the impression it's faded like patina. But anyway, if you see it's lined up now to the 12 o'clock marker, east will be a little bit off, west is off, uh, south, let, let's just fiddle it a bit. 
Yeah, it's all off. It's all slightly off. Some jokingly say that it can't be a real Seiko without some form of misalignment. Um, I also do think it is rather tubby, uh, mostly due to the display back, which I feel considering the rather utilitarian undecorated movement is really unnecessary. Personally, I would have preferred uh, they not include it and shave a few millimeters off. It, it would have made a world of difference. Um, it's amazing how just a few millimeters in a watch can change the whole way it wears. But then again, I am rather old school. Um, for me, thinness is always more elegant. The general size increase also diminishes some of that uh, vintage charm that it kind of exuded before. Um, but those with the larger wrists over my six and a quarter inch, uh, this ov obviously will not be an issue for you. Another unaddressed flaw is the inadequate orientation in low light. The Seiko Lumibrite Luminescence, while it is quite powerful considering its modest application, and I have to say the hands are easy to distinguish uh, from one another thanks to those alluring shapes and, and the more generous application uh, of the Luminescence. The small dot, however, does make it difficult at a quick glance to figure out the hours. I feel a double dot at the 12, or somehow making the marker different would really help here. Um, it actually makes me appreciate the often ridiculed phallic looking dots and dash of the Speedmaster loom. And whether you love it or loathe it, um, you cannot deny that is a good example of great orientation. It also must be said that the second crown turns a little bit um, too easily. I've noticed I've actually uh, bumped it and turned it uh, by accident just by wearing it and it rubbing on uh, clothing etc and while we are talking about the crown I'm not sure why uh, but they done away with the engraved S you typically you see this when you uh, buy more affordable Seikos not the other way around we're here we're spending much more money well quite substantially more um, so I don't understand why they cheapened out on that. It feels a bit like a corner cut. With the Saab 017 now discontinued, uh, vintage alpinists being chased down by collectors and the cult-like status of the watch, uh, is it any wonder that the price has uh, been hiked up a little bit? Um, Whenever anything becomes highly desired, it's only natural that the price increases. So is the extra $150 um, over its more famed green ancestor worth it? And with the hype of the Blue Alpinist, we saw rather unsavory backroom deals, uh, the limiting of its sales geographically, and then in turn, this resulted in price gouging. But for me, it just confirmed my suspicions of why there is no real watch journalism left, only watch dealers. This is a gift and a curse to the Alpi, as it helps it keep uh, its value retention, um, but at the cost of it certainly not being a value proposition, as they say. At the end of the day, the consumer can decide that for themselves with their wallets, um, because after all, how much something is worth is only ever truly determined by how much you're willing to pay for it. This watch does feel like a rushed cash grab. Um, and not a genuine refinement um, to the now well-established alpinist tradition. Um, however, looking at growing Amazon prices, many are still loving it and will continue to do so. It is unequivocally a historically important watch with its own uh, clearly defined personality and legacy. There is no doubt that this watch will make some owners extremely happy. Uh, that is, if you don't mind the beefed up scale and uh, persistent shortcomings. Uh, this configuration is the most versatile yet when it comes to straps, uh, situational and attire compatibility. But dare I say, a missed opportunity um, to right the same old wrongs. Personally, I would have preferred to wait longer and see a more well-developed, uh, more complete next instalment, even a higher-end version to truly compete with my beloved favorite watch of all time, the Rolex Explorer. Nevertheless, it is still a robust, uh, compelling, capable classic, 
Uh, and if anything, just confirms how special the previous green and blue versions were. Um, so not as much pure class as last time, uh, but still in its own way to a certain degree. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Please do not forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Please do let me know what you think of this latest Alpinist and what you'd like to see in the future Alpinists from Seiko. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. We all work hard for our money, so when it comes time to spend it on a luxury watch, the best way to take your money furthest is to buy pre-owned. With some dealers, this might be risky, but not at Watchbox. As a former customer, it was only natural I became part of the Watchbox family. I fell in love with the easy, safe and professional manner in which they do business. So why are they so highly regarded? Authenticity is always guaranteed. Every watch comes with a two-year warranty, and Watchbox has their own in-house Swiss-trained expert watchmakers. They have a global presence and an unrivaled selection. It's simply the best way to buy, sell, and trade your watches from the comfort of your own home, anywhere around the world, with a team comprised of passionate watch enthusiasts. As an urban gentry viewer, you can also benefit from this wonderful partnership with Watchbox. They are generously offering all Gentry members and viewers exclusive discounts on their next purchase. Please check the description below for the promo code to enter on their website. Watchbox is not just the best option to consider, it's the future of buying and selling watches online.